Good afternoon. This is a special and joyous day for us here at Pasadena Presbyterian Church. Uh, the installation of Reverend Dr. Lisa Hansen. Uh, she has been with us already a year, and so we're a little bit late, but uh, we're excited to do this today, and you are welcome. We ask that you keep your masks on while you sing and participate in the service, and we're excited to be with you here. So feel welcome as a part of our community this day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. As we gather, let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, by your grace you have called us to this time and place to be your servant people as we follow our servant Lord. Make your Holy Spirit move within us and among us that together we may live a new life in the crucified and risen Christ. Bind us together in faith so that we receive all spiritual gifts needed to fulfill our calling. We may support one another in common ministry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, you have called us to be your people and claimed us for the service of Jesus Christ. We confess that we have not lived up to your call to proclaim the good news in word and deed. We are quick to speak when we want to listen, and then we remain silent when it is our time to speak. We put too much faith in our own actions and fail to trust the strength of your spirit. O God, forgive all our mercies in this way. Strengthen us to follow our day in the world. By the Holy Spirit, give us the grace you need. Faithful disciples and fulfill our 
By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Come to the time of sharing the peace of Christ. Lead a life worthy of your calling with humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another in love, and making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. I don't think we're going to share right now. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you, Melinda. Very wonderful. Please join with me in the prayer illumination. Overwhelm us with your spirit, O oh God, that the words we hear will speak to our hearts as your words made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture readers, readings come to us today from Psalms 120 and 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the fifth to the ninth verse. Listen for the word of God. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slide. He will he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Who then is Paul and who is the apostles? But ministers whom ye believe, even as God gives to every man. He that planteth 
a palace, waters, but God gives the increase. So then neither he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labors. You are laborers together with God, Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Theological insight, self-awareness, and appropriate humility from the Apostle Paul as shared with the church at Corinth. It was 41 years ago that I took this scripture as the theme of my own ordination service. The career that followed was an amazing, unique, and non-traditional journey in ministry in the Presbyterian Church USA. But getting there was long and often painful. When I received the invitation to preach at this installation service, I was both surprised and humbled. And something drew me back to this passage of scripture. Some from Pasadena Presbyterian Church know me to be something of a Facebook addict, a group that attracts my attention quite regularly is labeled Happy to be Presbyterian PCUSA. A recent post made the following observation. Churches searching for a leader need to be more specific. Do they want a chaplain or an evangelist? The post elicited a fascinating thread of commentary from folks with a variety of perspectives. One response that caught my attention was from an East Coast polity guru that I had known many years ago. Reverend Carlos Wilton wrote, pastoral ministry is the last great generalist occupation. Nearing the end of my career, I continue to be astounded at all the areas of expertise I'm expected to master. Most of us muddle through with a shallow expertise in many areas. Some of us manage to specialize in one or two, sometimes to the detriment of others. Most of us who find some success do it by taking Paul's many members, one body, to heart and equipping others to do some of it. Or, honestly, just lucking into a church with a culture that makes that happen. Those who attempt to do it all with real depth burn out quickly. In other words, the Apostle Paul hit the nail on the head. But I wonder if the Apostle Paul, in his wildest imagination, could have foreseen stepping into leadership of a congregation with the rich history of Pasadena Presbyterian in the middle of a pandemic in a nation sharply polarized and in conflict. As hybrid worship becomes the heart of our life together, we are all learning new ways of being 
of governing ourselves, of caring for one another as the body of Christ, and of bearing witness to our faith in the world. As to Reverend Wilton's point about successful pastors looking into a church with a culture of equipping the saints for ministry, no church culture lasts forever. I have come to realize that Pasadena Presbyterian Church has been gifted with an amazing array of talented people. That said, I think the jury is still out whether this, is, this equipping remains a vital part of our culture here. One thing I can say without hesitation is that PPC was blessed with a pastor nominating committee that reflected the rich diversity of the church, was diligent and hardworking, and sought to learn about what they did not already know. Hats off to the PNC. I wonder if any of them would have imagined at the beginning that their final choice would have been a woman whose recent service was as a military chaplain. The Reverend Lisa Hansen brings to us an array of gifts and insights into ministry that we may not have experienced before. We have learned she can challenge us to be at our best and do better. She can urge us to be people of prayer. One year into this extraordinary ministry, she knows well that she cannot do it all or do it alone. We are learning as we go, and our roles in what is taking shape are coming into sharper focus. I find one element missing in Paul's three-part formulation. He makes no mention of the Holy Spirit. In our polity, Presbyterians often see the collective wisdom and voice of the people as the Holy Spirit at work in our midst. I have no doubt that the Holy Spirit was in our midst as the PNC worked towards its final decision and the congregation voted to extend a call to the Reverend Lisa Hansen to be the new head of staff and pastor for Pasadena Presbyterian Church. Now San Gabriel Presbytery marks its approval as well in this service of installation. Prayer, discernment, and intensive work have resulted in an inspired match of gifts with areas of need at Pasadena Presbyterian Church and its surrounding community. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth, wrote the Apostle Paul, to the church in Corinth. Of the same church, he also was moved to dismay over divisions and factions that grew up as those baptized by Apollos or others disagreed with the earliest Christians baptized by Paul. Is Christ divided, a dismayed Paul would ask of them? Shared ministry may have challenges, but a key unifier is a shared focus on God who gives the growth. As roles become more defined, we also learn when it is time to stay in our respective lanes. Pastor Lisa suggested Psalm 121 as the Old Testament text for this service. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. In choosing it, she noted to me that it always points her to who is in charge of everything. I couldn't agree more. For that matter, I have a pretty good idea that Paul would agree as well. Amen.
to the time for the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me sentence of scripture. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. There are many varieties of serving God, but it is the same God. 
is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. Together, we are the body of Christ and individual members of it. The Presbytery of St. Gabriel, by means of this commission, welcomes Lisa Hansen as a minister of word and sacrament and installs her as head pastor of Pasadena Presbyterian Church. So we begin. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? I do and I will. Will you be a minister of the word and sacrament? in obedience to Jesus Christ, under the authority of scripture and continually guided by our confessions. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. Will you be a faithful minister of the word and sacrament, proclaiming the good news in word and sacrament, teaching faith, and caring for people? Will you be active in government and discipline, serving in the councils of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. Do we, the members of the church, accept Lisa Hansen as our pastor, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to guide us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. we do. Do we agree for her? Do we agree to pray for her, encourage her, to respect her decisions, and to follow as she guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? We do. We do. Do we promise to pay her fairly and provide for her welfare as she works among us, to stand by her in trouble and share her joy? Will we listen to the word she preaches, welcome her pastoral care, and honor her authority as she seeks to honor and obey Jesus Christ, our Lord? We do, and we will. Time to pray for Reverend Hansen. And we might have ordinarily gathered around and laid hands on her, but we won't do that in these COVID times. So I really invite you as we pray to just in your hearts and perhaps if you have your hands in your lap, you can open them up as we uh, lift up Lisa Hansen in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Through the ages and in every place you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, 
for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and truth, for leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for your servant Lisa as she continues in the ministry to which you have called her. Help her to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give her a spirit of truthfulness that she may proclaim your word in Christ from pulpit, table, and font, and in the words and actions of daily living. By the gifts of your Holy Spirit, empower her to build up the church to strengthen the common life of your people and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to all your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain your church in ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lisa, you are now a minister of the Word and Sacrament in and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Greetings. It is a joy and an honor and a privilege to provide the charge today. So about 17 years ago, Pastor Lisa and I, uh, Richard, Dan, met each other. We formed a relationship, a partnership that has lasted through many ups and downs in the beginning we realized we had many differences. And I have to tell you, there was one difference that almost was a deal breaker for me. And in any good relationship that begins and moves forward, you will have those moments, right? Anybody want to guess what it might have been? And this is not an answerable question. <laughs> we were in Montgomery, Alabama when we met if you live in Montgomery, you are a Braves fan. She revealed she's a Dodgers fan. I think you can understand, right? <laughs> yes, I was wrong. What we realized in the coming together, it's for love of the game. There is no game if there aren't other teams, is there? for love of the game. In preparation for the charge, I ask you one question. Other than Jesus, who is the most important person in this church? Have you ever thought about that? And probably several folks are running through your mind but in my mind, the answer is you, me. You are the most important person. God has given you gifts, talents, personality, vision, passion, 
has called you to this congregation, to this church, you are the most important person. Isn't that wonderful? Look to your left. That would be this way, I guess. See the person and the people to your left. The amazing gifts they have. Look to your right. The amazing gifts, what they bring. They and you are important. I could get backwards and forwards right, I think. No, I didn't even do that right. Yeah. That's why we work well together. Now the charge. I charge this body of believers to first listen. Listen to learn from each other. Listen to learn about each other. Your origin stories, your hopes, your passions, your dreams, your encounters with Christ. Listen to the community that surrounds you. Listen to God's leading. I charge you to look for each other's gifts and to cultivate your own gifts, to bring your gifts to the cross, to the empty tomb, to those in need, to renew your sense of call to what God has called you to. Why? Because there is someone that you may have seen, that you may not have seen. There is someone who is in the lost storms of life, who needs you, who is joyously celebrating something wonderful alone that needs you, this church, you as a person, you as a community. Together, Pastor Lisa and Pasadena Press, the community needs you, is counting on you, with all your gifts, serving together as God has called you. Love God, love one another. Amen. You have been called to be among us, to baptize, to teach, and to forgive sins. You have been called to be among us, to proclaim the good news. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. Lisa. In, in my 75 years at this church, this is certainly a high point to be representing the pastor nominating committee who represents the whole congregation of Pasadena Presbyterian Church to help give this to you, <laughs> to enwrap you, and to make sure it is clear that you are our leader.
made me see this. Now comes the uh, offering time in our, in our service here. And this is a special offering. This offering will be used for the commission of the ministry for the Presbytery of San Gabriel to assist pastors with urgent needs and uh, to help in the San Gabriel Presbytery. You can make your checks out to the San Gabriel Presbyterian of San Gabriel. We have baskets in the back. Dr. Howard. Please pray with me as we dedicate this offering. We thank you, O oh God, for the gifts of time, talent, and treasures that comes from you alone. For the time of those who have planned and for those who have practiced for it. Our time of worship together, for the talents of readers, musicians, and composers of Christian music for the talents of preachers, presiders, and writers of prayers, for the treasure of money earned by your gifts of our labor, so that we might offer it in love to you for the work of your kingdom. Amen.
am overwhelmed. Uh, it has been a long journey. It was many years uh, a journey in the Air Force where uh, people like Dan, Doug, and Rich helped to shape me as a pastor. Um, many mentors along the way. Um, I'm appreciative for Dr. Howard, for Dr. Wiebe, uh, for their help and support over this past year, the PNC, who saw something in me uh, as I saw something in you all. Coming here, starting in the middle of a pandemic, trying to deal with masks and vaccines and death and, and staying here alone was hard. But I had your support and love, and I could feel it every day. When on Pentecost Sunday we were live in this place, it was overwhelming, and I thought that was the most overwhelmed I could be, but your love is amazing to me. The choir did phenomenal work, and to sing in a mask is not easy. And I picked some old moldy hymns for today, and I appreciate <laughs> Dr. Howard putting up with that and really making it rock and roll here. So I appreciate that a great deal. So I get to give the benediction on all of this, and it will not be my last one here. It wasn't my first one here, but it is a very meaningful one. So whoever you are, wherever you go in God's wide world, whatever happens to you of good, or of ill, always remember that Jesus is Lord. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power and presence of the Holy Spirit be with you in this place and wherever you go in God's wide world. Amen.